Well, hello, I'm Pandox, and recently it's become quite common to find Manhua where the MC returns to the past, gets reincarnated, or just comes back after disappearing for a long time. Today, I'm back with top 10 Manhua where the MC is a returnee or gets reincarnated. So, without any further ado, let's open the box. Number 10 Duke Pendragon. After his family was framed and got executed, Raven was forced into bloody battles for 10 years. In one faithful battle, he gets betrayed and killed, and somehow gets involved in a ritual performed by a dragon that lost its knight in the battle. And just like that, he wakes up in the past, but in the body of that dragon rider who is the young master of a duke household. Now his goal is to regain his previous family's honor and his current family's power and status at the same time. On top of that, Raven will change even the reputation of the original original owner of his body who used to be a weak coward. With his experience and knowledge as a battlefield demon, Raven shall rewrite everything, not to mention his soulmate, the beautiful white dragon, Soul Drake. The novel was decent but I didn't like the side characters that much because their motives and personalities were generic and unsatisfactory. The world building is not that special too, but it is acceptable. Nonetheless, I would say the man who is and will be enjoyable much more because of the good artwork. The story is dark in some occasions but there are some bright moments. Overall, it deserves a try. Number 9. Soul Station's Necromancer I also read the novel of this manhua a few years ago, and I remember that it was a decent read overall even though I didn't like the rushed ending. Anyway, after he spent 20 years in another world, the MC is finally back to Earth, but he finds out that only 5 years have passed in this side. Not much later that he learns that the time difference isn't the only abnormality. Earth that he used to remember is now filled with dungeons and superhumans. In the midst of all of this, he starts regaining his lost power from scratch. But this time, he shall become not only an immortal who leads an army of the dead, but also a warrior that is unrivaled. The MC is totally merciless but kind to his people, and I hope they manifest him in the manhua like he is in the novel. The side characters don't have much role, but their interactions with the MC are funny. The art style is good, and the story seems to be following the novel, which is a good sign. This is a kind of kingdom building manhua, I could say. The journey of the MC is flashy and great, so try to focus on that and enjoy it. Number 8 Kill the Hero after he arrives at the last gate where the last battle awaits him and his trusted comrades in a world filled with monsters and dungeons, the MC is betrayed and killed by his closest friends who fear losing power and influence over people after saving the world. A second later, the MC wakes up and finds out that he has returned to the past exactly before he becomes a player, and now he has the experience and knowledge he accumulated as a top player, with one major goal in his mind, which is to make those traitors suffer more than he has. He chooses another class unlike his past life, and with that class he shall lead an army of the dead and become an unstoppable monster. The artwork is decent and the story expands as it goes on, and gets into more details with some side stories. The MC is savage and cold-blooded, as he doesn't trust anybody easily after he learned not to the hard way. It is a good read for people who are looking for a main character who manages and climbs his way back to the top. Number 7. The Descent of the Demonic Master after he rose to the top of the Murrim world as the heavenly demon, all factions and even betrayers gather to kill him. At the verge of death, he takes the one who betrayed him at least, and then we come to know that he was a man who once lived in the modern world. After his death, he wakes up in a hospital in the modern world. This is the second chance in life that he wanted, so he remains true to his last wish, which is to live a normal and peaceful life. Alas, things don't go like he wants, as there are others like him who travel to times of wars and came back to reign and once again built their powers and status. The story doesn't focus much on fighting but instead on the MC's daily life and how he tries his best to be as normal as possible. But there are some battles that are inevitable to happen and he needs to act upon that. The fighting also becomes quite common as the story progresses. The characters have distinct personalities and are well written. The MC himself is cold and isn't talkative, but he speaks facts when he does. Try it if you're looking for a chair ride with some exciting moment here and there. Number 6. Return of the Disaster Class Hero 
The MC goes with 12 comrades to kill a source of evil that threatens humanity. But in front of danger, the other 12 run away and leave him alone. Yet he scarcely manages to eliminate the threat. And when he becomes powerless after the battle, one of the 12 stabs him in the back and traps him in that hellish place. In a never-ending cycle of killing monsters that are summoned infinitely, the MC strives with one arm and severe injuries and fights non-stop, obliterating every monster. And just like that, 20 years past till the MC kills the source behind all the monsters. After he has accomplished the impossible, his achievements throughout those 20 years manifest themselves as a new power that grants him a new body and abilities. Now that he has returned to the world, his main goal is to torment those who run away and slaughter the one who stabbed him in the back. The story is interesting, the art is amazing, and the MC's personality is funny and savage, fitting for his openness. It's also hilarious how he messes with everyone with ease since he has attained a much greater power that allows him to rival even gods, you really should try it out. Number 5. The Return of the Crazy Demon After he successfully stole a sacred item from the demonic cult, the MC is cornered after days of him being chased. He narrates his life story to his enemies and then swallows the item that he stole before he clashes with the enemies and dies. Suddenly, he finds himself talking to an old man who tells him that he has swallowed a pearl that contains many souls of martial artists. After a short discussion, the old man gets convinced so he sends the MC back in time as a gift for his efforts. The main character wakes up in the past as the pitiful errand boy he used to be, and he realizes that he has so much energy in his body because of the heavenly pearl. So he quickly gets stronger enough for him to go repay some people that used to bully him as a kid. After he makes a scene, he starts building his status while establishing a clan. What I like about this story is that the main character remains true to his character as an old man even after going back to his younger self. He acts like the expert he is in most situations and gets things done we needed to without dragging. The side characters are really enjoyable and funny to read, especially this dude. You'll love him. The story isn't that special but the pace is balanced. The art style is wonderful so it's a plus and I can at least guarantee that you will laugh a lot while reading this. Try it out! Number 4. Return of the 8th Class Magician Ian Phage, the strongest magician, helped greatly to unify the Empire, but the Emperor, his closest friend, betrays and poisons him. In his last moments, the MC uses his hidden card and activates a spell that returns him to the past. He arrives at the time when his mother is still alive and the magician scouting group is visiting their village. Unlike the main characters in other stories who try to hide their full potential, Ian knows that he should instead go all out from the beginning, so he shows his marvelous talent to the scouting group and proves himself immediately as a genius among geniuses. That's how he obtains respect, power and status that will benefit his mother and his own agenda. He harnesses his knowledge and experience from his past as an 8th class magician and speedruns his growth. All of this is to ensure the safety of his loved ones and take vengeance on his old friend who is still a prince now. The politics are interesting while they aren't that complicated. The characters are wholesome even though they are quite shallow. The art is fantastic and battles are dope. The main character is calm and decisive and remains faithful to his goals. Read it for a good refresher. Number 3. The Great Mage Returns After 4000 Years Lucas Troman, the greatest magician in human history. He is someone who achieved his goals and started volunteering to protect the world from monsters. One day, a demigod appears and arrogantly disables Lucas before imprisoning him in the abyss for eternity to doubt his own existence eventually. Frey Blake, on the other hand, is a talentless young noble who is disgraced and bullied consistently. One day, his father disposes of him like everyone else, which acts like the last blow to Frey's pride and self-worth. But as the saying goes, someone's fortune is somebody else's misfortune. When Frey decides to finally end his own life, Lucas, deep in the dark, sees the light. Somehow, Frey enters the consciousness of Lucas, and that's how Lucas gets his way out from the abyss and takes over the the body of Frey. Lucas swears that he will achieve Frey's dreams and take his own revenge on the demigod who imprisoned him for 4000 years. The story is well written and each character has their own personality. Politics are interesting and the fights are dope, not to mention the great artwork. The main character is OP but he is funny and cultured in his own way. You have to try this one if you haven't yet. 
Number 2. The Max Level Hero has returned. After his mother dies poisoned, Prince Davy enters a coma because of an attempt of assassination from his half-brother. In his coma, he somehow goes to the Hall of Heroes, a place where all the great heroes from history gather after death. He trains there for a thousand years under each hero and acquires their techniques. A millennium later, he leaves the hall and wakes up from the coma and learns that six years have passed in the real world. He now has a fragile body, but also all the knowledge and experience that he gathered in the hall of heroes. He shall build up his last status again and take revenge on the ones who made him and his mother suffer. The story goes smoothly with the satisfying pace, and what makes it more interesting is the main character who is calm and nonchalant all the time, even when butchering dozens of enemies. His openness covers every aspect and role that the side characters could have taken, but that doesn't diminish their existence as they are not there to support the main character in his battles in the first place. The art style is beautiful and suits the story very well since I can't imagine it's drawn differently. This is a must read if you like fantasy manhua with OP but not cringy MC. Number 1. Reincarnation of the Suicidal Battle God Zephyr is the last human in a world filled with demons that hunt him non-stop, but he fights back even in such a dire situation. In his last moments, the demon god offers him fake mercy, but Zephyr fakes his submission and activates his last strike to sustain his pride and resists the one who's taken everything from him. And now, after he thought it was finally the end after failure, he wakes up in a temple where a high angel welcomes him. The angel then tells him that the gods are offering him a chance to go to the past because they find him interesting. Not only that, but the demon god himself suggests to send the last human who damaged his body to the past so he can restore his pride that Zephyr has tarnished. After realizing that the gods who abandoned humans we needed just watched the suffering of humans for entertainment, Zephyr hates the gods even more. However, he accepts the offer from the gods and the privileges they give him as a returnee, and promises himself to take revenge on all the gods, including the demon god. While the story isn't that special, it is well written and keeps you interested. The characters are enjoyable, especially the MC with his tough and adventurous nature. The art style is straight away top notch, so give it a try and you are highly likely to love it. Well I hope you guys found something to read, and as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this one, so I can say my favorite word in the world. See you again when opening another box.